So this is why, like you said, we're doubling down on what works instead of trying to fix what doesn't to go hard on these strengths because I think the the self-belief, the power, the way that you just feel so capable is is what's needed to make a big difference in this self-belief and that you can do. And those dreams that you've got and that thing that you really want to do, but you don't quite think you can. No, you can. And let's see exactly. Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies, on this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Lindsay Guest. She's a qualified health coach and a positive psychology coach. And with those two certifications, she's combined them to do something called strengths-based coaching. It's not about lifting weights. It's actually about finding your strengths and amplifying them. Now, how does this work? Well, she has two particular tests. There's something called the Gallup Strength Test, and then there's also the VIA, which is a values test. And she combines those two tests on her clients to determine what you value most and what your strengths are in your personality. What's crazy about this is that it really highlights things you're good at and can help you if you're struggling with that comparison syndrome, imposter syndrome, and you know, something that's just really, it's something that's really common this day and age, especially in midlife when we start to have lots of changes with our bodies and we're going, oh, who am I? What's going on? I really think Lindsay can help folks. And actually, I created a two-part podcast because Lindsay and I ended up working together after our first podcast because I couldn't say no to an offer she gave me for working with her. So part one, we're going to talk about what strengths-based coaching is. Part two, we're going to go into what happened when I worked with Lindsay. So let's introduce you to Lindsay Guest. Lindsay Guest, welcome to the Health Fix Podcast. Thank you so much and thank you for having me here. I'm very excited. Oh my goodness. We have had so much fun before hitting record. Sorry, guys. I will hope that we can we can only live up to the good entertainment we've had coming into this podcast. Lindsay's got so much. I mean, she's she's been just like the little bird on my shoulder telling me such good things that I'm just like, can I keep her around all day long? So and Lindsay, Lindsay says she will. <laughs> I I I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. So, so Lindsay, you, you're helping women identify their strengths and, and using that in, in the realm of positive psychology. And before we hit record, of course, we were talking about toxic and Susie Sunshine kind of positive psychology and that, you know, you know, we all know on social media that we see a lot of fake stuff and only people's best stuff, but we all have a place at which we're like, oh my gosh, I got to get out of this mood. I got to get out of this funk, especially Mm -hmm. in the perimenopause, menopause realm. And I don't know where you were in in the transition of things when you found yourself at your lowest point, but you had such a great story in terms of how you you jumped on a positive (laughs) psychology (laughs) training and you were in tears, the only one on there in tears. Tell, Tell us a little bit about how positive psychology found you and how you embraced it and and give us a little better on your background there so folks can kind of understand where our foundation of today's podcast is going. Absolutely. So I was, uh, well, I started out a non-linear journey through essential oils, omega-3 products. I got to become a health coach and then my own personal crash in life through separation, uh, having to lose what I thought would be my forever home and change my kids' schools. It was a real loss of identity. I have this very, or had the very black and white view of life. Um, And so despite having the foundations of, let's say, healthy foundations through the health coaching, so stress relief, getting out in nature, a solid base of foundation you know I get my good nutrients in every day it wasn't enough I was completely on the floor um despite everybody telling me you know it's all going to be fine I could not see the light after my situation for me it was all finished um and I think what how positive psychology found me was the algorithm doing its stuff for good Mm. for one 
And um, I think I typed in, I don't know, how to be happy, how to feel better or something into a Google search. And then up came this positive psychology coaching course. And um, I just remember seeing this statistic, which for me was this real wake up call in it, which is that only 10% of our happiness is down to circumstance. And it must have been the right time. You know, these things come to you anyway at the right time. (laughs) Um, I did have to defer actually doing the course because at one point I was too low. And the, But when I started, it was the right time. And this fact that it's in our hands, there is a lot we can do. And that, yeah, as I said, it was this, it just made me feel, okay, I have a responsibility here for myself, and my children to get out of this situation. And um, yes, as, <laughs> as you said, the first uh, Zoom call, because there are these incredible women on this course from all over the world. And I was supposed to be on the first introductory Zoom call. I was actually up first or one of the first to say hello and who am I? And my internet connection went down and I joined back on the call and I was at the end of the line. So I listened for 15, 20 minutes to these incredible women introducing themselves, talking about these amazing businesses that they had, how they're just so naturally happy in life, um, this kind of stuff. And then it got to me and it was just too much. (laughs) And I just burst out crying. I couldn't even talk. I burst out crying on the first positive psychology coaching Mm -hmm. call saying, you know, that I just wasn't happy and I couldn't see how to be. And um, yes, that was kind of felt quite ironic to start off like that. But the point is, it really has such a big impact on me that it has now become the main focus of my business. Um, Because that hadn't been my intention. It had been just for myself. But yeah, it's been transformational. And I just want everybody to know what, what there is out there and what you can do to help yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I find that your situation, you know, while there may be different twists to it, I find that for a lot of women, this isn't uncommon. And especially women entrepreneurs and women who have been in the health and fitness space. Because we do all the things, right? We're eating healthy, we're working out, we're, you know, connecting with others. But at the same time, we're like, I don't feel good, like mentally. And and we had even talked about you know, we're taught like health starts in the gut and this and that. And and I'm like, yes, and I think um, we need to work up here because if I look at the root of all the things that I have gotten hung up on, you yeah. said it best, little habits in the head. Yeah, that was it for me. I'd done so much stuff as I we were talking before, you know, all different kinds of therapy from the traditional to the more <laughs> out there. Um hypnotherapy also always doing acupuncture but it wasn't enough and I just realized until my mind was sorted all of the physical well-being yes essential and surely stopped me from hitting rock bottom and I think everything that's what we were saying before as well everything's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle so you need it all but for me I just realized that without this improvement in my mindset and a different outlook I wasn't I wasn't going to make big improvements. Yeah. And this is the thing, like, you know, when we're creating programs and whatnot, and you probably heard this too, folks are like, you know, sell them, sell them what they want, give them what they need. And, and what that means for those of you guys who are not in the entrepreneurial space, what that means is we do try to build mindset into a lot of our programs and kind of work it in on you. But I really think we should just be straight up honest and say, you're not going to get this done unless you get your mind right. I don't know. You have to put the work <laughs> in. You need to do it. It's not a magic um, yeah. miracle cure. You do actually have to do work with it. But once you do and you have these big self-discovery journeys, also with the coaching, though, there is a million different ac- approaches to coaching. Sure. And it's also there a case of finding the one that works for you because this, you know, as you know, I've focused on the strengths, which is one pillar, one aspect of the positive psychology coaching but that's what works for me. And so you find what works for you and it will come at the right time, maybe after different, trying out different things, but. For sure. Yeah. Well, I like that you're focusing on strengths. And and when I saw what you did and and our, our mutual friend, Helen, um, introduced us, I was like, strengths. Now this is something like a lot of us 
get so caught up in what isn't working, what mm -hmm. isn't great about us, what we need to learn, what we need to improve that we totally forget our strengths and then add that on top of feeling like you've lost your identity and who you are in, in this whole perimenopause, menopause transition. Now you honed in on that big time. Tell us a little bit about your strengths, like mastery program, but, but more than that, actually, before we go there, I want to know how you help folks identify their strengths. Cause I saw you had a questionnaire and all. This yes. So on up. that one, I, so through the positive psychology that I did, I co coaching course that I did, I use, you know, a similar thing. So we use both the Gallup, the Clifton strengths, which they give you more of a kind of businessy approach. And also there's, um, there's a company called VIA, which are your values, values in action. So it's really putting the two together um, to just get this. It's just to validate who you are. And what I find just amazing about these strengths, because when you first see them written down, th then there's a lot of self-inquiry that you do as well. It's not just these. So, yeah, it's a mixture of the self-inquiry, looking back and what energizes you. This is the other thing, like you were saying, we spend so long that, again, this negativity bias when you hear a bad comment, how much does that stay in your brain forever and ever? You know, we don't we don't concentrate on what's good, which was actually needed. You know, there's an evolutionary reason for why people why you have to remember the negatives kept us alive once upon a time. But nowadays it's not the same. Um, so focusing on what works and that's how you're going to excel. So I like to call it find your unique brilliance. Because yes, we all have different ways of achieving and different ways of succeeding. And the way that I do it energizes me. And if I try to do it in your way, that wouldn't energize me possibly. We could have different strengths. And so when you know what your natural areas of, of strength are, these innate ways that you have of doing things, when you really double down on those and exactly concentrate on what works instead of what needs fixing, it's just a whole different way of going into your life. I I imagine it being easier because when we focus on what doesn't work, right? What's broken, what's, you know, as maybe we're calling it broken and what's not working. I feel like we just get more of what's not working. And yeah. as a doctor, I feel like that, especially when it comes to like the biggest cringe I have in my practice is weight loss. Right. When someone yeah. comes to me and like, I just want, you know, I want to get my hormones right. I want to do this. I want to do that. But really, I just want weight loss. If, if yeah. I, it always comes down to that, it, right? Always, <laughs> always. You know, I, I feel like sometimes I try to weed it out of people and be like, just tell me what you really want. Can you just, yeah, okay, you want weight loss. All right, cool. Like, you know, people could be like, my hormones are bounced. I don't have any more hot flashes. Like, I feel great in my body, but I need to lose weight still. Yeah. Let's yeah. not focus on that. Let's not focus on that. Like mm -hmm. that one is one of the ones that bugs me. So, so when we're foc focusing on strengths, what are, what are some of the most common strengths that women overlook that they have? Like if we, if we look at like the, the most common ones you see, what are some of the things people just. Well, that's an interesting one because there aren't, there aren't, that's the amazing thing about these strengths is it actually stops comparison. It helps with that whole imposter syndrome because everyone is unique. And also the order that you have strengths will uh, show up differently. Okay. Okay. So you can have, I don't know, for example, I have empathy as my top strength. Okay. Which on first look, you're like, oh, well, that's not a very strong, a strong strength, is it? That's not the greatest <laughs> business asset I could have but then when you look into it and you look back and you see how that's helped you in your life empathy has helped me build connections it helps with relationship building this kind of thing but how my empathy shows up depends on what the following strengths in my profile are so I can I've got empathy and then I'm high in communication so I see someone struggling I'm compelled to go over there and talk and you know help pull them out of it or help them talk someone else that has top empathy but then it's followed by strengths that are not so um extroverted let's say they may go about it in a different way they may go and find you know research or speak to someone else to get someone else to help them there's lots of ways that our strengths show up in 
you know, in a, in a different way. So the, I don't know, empathy, I see a lot, uh, communication, but then I've had other, quite a few other people that are very high in one called learner. So they're, you know, into the research. So whereas for me, if I need to do something, I probably pick up the phone, you know, I don't go and research and analyze, but I know the people that do that. And so they might <laughs> be my yeah. first call. Yeah. Whereas, again, someone else would go about it in a completely different way and they would need to take their time, look into it, find their own information. So there is, you know, there are some strengths that show up more, more than others, but the things like these analytical, strategic or communicator, you know, these are the kind of profiles that you see. Ooh. I like I like that you highlight we're all unique because, it, it, you know, like you said, the comparison thing, I think a lot of people are like, I wish I was this. I had these strengths. Right. We always kind of go back to comparison and saying, I wish I had this. I wish I had that. But then. What if we could capitalize on things we're already naturally good at? And make it so easy. Yeah, this is I think, again, for me, it's been a real game changer because I've always been someone that was, oh, well, she's better than me. She's cleverer than me. She's, you know, everyone's more fill in the gap than me. So really getting into um yeah what it is that you're good at and you start to realize oh yeah actually that is me and look and this is part of the strengths mastery that we do and part of all of this strengths coaching is so it's not just identifying so yes first you need to discover what they are and then you need to define and go into it but then you actually so what you do and which is just amazing as you start so you've got these words basically let's say what these strengths words are when you go back and look at times when you've been super energized or times when you've been super successful and you start to see oh yeah when I was doing that so in my case let's say I will always have been with other people probably you know there's always the same kind of themes show up so the more that you look into it it starts to build up this oh oh yeah and so the more you look into it, then it builds up more of a belief within yourself. And then what you start to do, so you look into it, you look into it, and you have to, one thing that we do is you kind of keep a strengths journal and each day, just have a little think of where, where you've shown, used your strengths today. And, and then you can start using them and actually leveraging them. So when you know you're going to be facing a challenge or, I don't know, you and I again, before we were talking <laughs> about if you've got to post on social media, I've got to show up on Instagram, I really don't want to. But when I look at my strengths, which are relationship building, communication, all of this kind of stuff, I'm like, okay, but I can do it. I might not want to, but that's a different, <laughs> that's a different thing altogether. So yeah, so it stops this comparison because you know where you're successful and you recognize that, okay, sh they're successful because, yeah, we also, as we were saying before, when you start to really recognize your own strengths and you see these words coming up, then you start to be able to recognize them in others as well. And that can help with relationships, communication. There's just no end to what these strengths can do for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking this right about relationships and connections and communication and, and, you know, whether it's interpersonal, whether it's, you know, things that are going on in the workplace, things of that nature. And we were talking about how you could see strengths in others and, and know that, you know, you don't have to have the same strengths as them and how and people can complement each other. Have you found in, in some of the folks that you've coached now that their relationships have improved they've, or they've sought out? certain types of relationships someone that complements them better absolutely I mean I think I think for everybody once you're aware of your strengths you do you can see who you are what that means and how how you show up in a relationship and how you show up in communication and then you start to take more responsibility for yourself it's all about this self-awareness personal development but this self-growth and that I mean also if you look in teams in workplaces if you're having problems, you know, a team is not gelling, or you're not reaching objectives. If everyone's working in their own strength and you can do these um, grid, like a strengths grid for teams. So everybody, oh, wow. does, everyone does the assessment and they all put it in. And there it's about you can really come together and say, OK, as a team, we're really strong. You know, you can see how many 
strengths of one type come up and then you can really celebrate the differences and you know if you've got a certain project or whatever it is who's got the strength that you can leverage for what you need and again with the communication as I think we were talking before not on this and I'm a bit confused (laughs) um but we were you know if I need to if I've got something to do my first thing is to go and talk to someone but maybe me arriving on the scene and, you know, with this energy and wanting to talk it through, if I'm talking to someone that's really high in, yeah, I keep saying, but it was a good example, learner, analytic, strategic kind of strengths, their best way of working may not be in a group or talking it through. They might need, in order for them to work best, to take some time and to research and to find the information And so it's not that we don't get on and it's not that we don't like each other and that we can't communicate. We just need to realize how each one shows up and what each person brings to the table. And once you realize that, then things really start to flow better and communication is just, yeah, so much better. Hmm. I'm thinking about this for like dating. (laughs) We, we need to do the surveys, right? While you're, while you're dating to find out. Okay. So in, in your, before we go for for our coffee or dinner, right. You need to fill this (laughs) out first before we meet. That's, That's what I'm thinking going forward that, you know, gosh, it could save people a lot of grief. I don't know. I'm just thinking about it. Like, That's like has- a love languages test as well. No, I do think that you need to go with all of this stuff now. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. You need to take a month before we meet to get get through all of these assessments. <laughs> right. Forget forget these dating sites of just you know we we meet up and go out. No, we we there's a whole process. Hey. Yeah. I, you might be on to something in terms of matching people up in this case. I've, I've now created a new division for your, for your business. A whole new path we've gone on to here, exactly. Oh, Bye. my goodness. Well, you know, I, I do think being able to understand our strengths is so important in that aspect. But I do think, you know, kind of bringing it back to, to the resilience that we have. If we know where we're solid and we know, yeah. like, we could double down on that. I I think that's so huge. And like you had said before, you had on your your cell phone, Mm -hmm. you know, before you post on social media, you read on your cell phone, your strengths. I think Mm -hmm. if a lot of people had that in the back of their mind or or on the sticky note on their mirror, that Mm -hmm. might be quite helpful in, I I think, a lot of the areas of insecurity that we have around perimenopause and menopause, too. And procrastination. Oh, Let's talk about that one for a minute. <laughs> How long do we have? <laughs> you, got, you got two, <laughs> well, two hours just, now. And, and the resilience. Again, I think, you know, I came to these strengths through a separation and this loss of identity and this massive, you know, overwhelm about what is life, what's my future. Again, perimenopause, menopause, it's the same thing. There's things that are happening out of your control and against your will. Mm-hmm. a lot of the time and and with these changes you can lose yourself and you you know the self-doubt comes in you lose the confidence so if you're really grounded in you know maybe everything around you is going wrong for many reasons mm-hmm. whatever they may be but if you know you have this toolbox basically of of your strengths so you know what you can leverage and you know what how you work best and it's not even just how you're most successful it's also the enjoyment factor Mm. again and I can't remember I think it was before we were saying this that you know if I'm not feeling good because of my strengths profile I know that even if maybe I don't feel like it once I've been out and surrounded by people I will feel better and I will feel energized whereas someone else with a very different more introverted set of strengths they need to know that that's not going to help them feel better and that's not going to energize them. And so it really helps with decision-making, again, with the procrastination, also boundaries and saying no. When you do it and you know what your strengths and your values are, so again, with the strengths master, we look at the values as well. It's just really knowing who am I? What's important to me? What am I good at? What do I enjoy doing? It means you can really live in an aligned way 
And again, for me, boundaries and saying no has always been a difficult thing. But when you're doing it from this really authentic place and you really know deep down inside you that that is or isn't working with you, you do show up differently and you have a different form of, yeah, it's, it's not a self-belief, but this this really secure, firm way of moving mm-hmm. forward. So again, if we take that back to perimenopause and menopause, when things are all a bit out of whack and everything's not what it was and you don't know what, you know, you know, and there may be a sense of loss about, you know, certain phases of your life and things. So just being really grounded in the basics, the foundation of who am I can just help keep you a bit steadier. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hey, Hell Junkies, struggling with sleep? As a former insomniac, I can relate. Devin Burke is a pal of mine. He has the Sleep Science Academy. He's been on my podcast twice, and we've talked a lot about how to work on sleep naturally, without supplements, without medications. Devin's program really does work with you to help you understand what is going on in your brain and body when it comes to sleep. And as a listener of the Health Fix podcast, he's given us a code for 10% off of his program, DRJ10. So if you're interested, use that. I highly recommend his program. So let's get back to the podcast. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's wise. I think that's wise to look at it that way because I mean, so many women, you know, at this stage, we're kind of the first generation really to be in careers going through mm-hmm. menopause and higher level, yeah. you know, careers um, where a lot of women are kind of like, you know, some people are leaving their careers because of the symptoms mm-hmm. that they have, you know, and, and some of the, the mind stuff too, because I truly believe the dips in dopamine, serotonin, you know, hormone shifts, things like that can really mess with our mind and make us anxious and things of that nature. So being more solid in who you are, I think is that resilience. That Yeah, because it won't stop you from having those bad days and it won't stop you from having obstacles and challenges. But it means that you do bounce back faster and you do know what is the best way for you to deal with it. So yeah, it doesn't eliminate the negative and the difficult things, but it means that you can deal with it better and deal with it faster. That's faster. I think, I mean, better and faster, I think is huge because that way we can kind of move things on the fly. Also, have you worked with any women when you were looking at their cycle and where they like connected to, to changing things and working on resilience in certain parts of the cycle too? I haven't done that yet, but I mean, I would, there's so much I want to bring into this. I mean, yeah, with the health coaching background as well, I, I mean, it just never ends. I could bring in a million things, but yeah, I mean, I think that's a really, really interesting thing to look at. Not interesting, fundamental is because we have a different rhythm. We don't just have our circadian rhythm, do we? We're not like men. There's a whole, there's the whole monthly rhythm that needs looking into, which changes everything well everything no but has an enormous impact that's not really ever been considered before so yeah vital to add that part in as well yeah yeah I think I think about it often especially now as I'm kind of going through perimenopause and and probably getting towards menopause here soon but still with my cycles I do feel like certain times of the month I am like there's no confidence I'm yeah. just done. You know, I'm yeah. just like, forget this. I'm done. Whereas other times I'm like, all right, I got this. I can do this, you know? And and I... But you're giving me some great ideas here, you know? Now I'm going <laughs> to... I've got a whole new aspect to add in. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. yeah take, take them. Because I mean, it's... I do find that like for so many women, you know, even when I see them... I see a lot of people now telehealth, but also in person. And, and I see them in different phases of their cycle because we'll be working on hormone balance because that's yep. my my jam and i see like the different like personalities that show up and and where we're more vulnerable throughout mm. the month yeah. and so oh, no, really now you've got me thinking about a whole new way of doing this but yeah i mean it's so important yeah we we, and often we go think about it right and then you get your period yeah like, oh that's why <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I was crying in the middle. No, it's more <laughs> like, yeah. Or that's why I didn't want to take that extra step. Cause I, I didn't, I wasn't, you know, or that's why I didn't want to post on social media. 
Yeah. And for a lot of people who are listening, that may not be relevant, but more like that's why I didn't want to take that risk in 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 the office, yeah. right? Or that's why I didn't want to do this or that, or that maybe if someone's stuck right now and listening, you know, they're, they're trying to get a business off the ground and, yeah. you know, they're like, I'm good for like three quarters of the month. And that one, one week, it's just, it's done. I'm going to quit. I'm never doing it again. Why I think female entrepreneurs need to be in groups with other, I'm actually, I'm working with a business coach who is, it's for female founders and our way of scheduling our time and planning mm-hmm. launch business or whatever it is you actually do need to take that into account because exactly like you say if you've got a launch or I don't know you've got a big thing coming up and it's going to fall at the wrong time if you know that you can prepare for it mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. So yeah yeah I I think it's really important for for women to be thinking about and those of you who are listening if you if you don't have a period currently you still cycle I highly recommend everyone to look at when they're most vulnerable or when they're most like <laughs> showing up with all like the mindset of those those like weaknesses instead of you're not you can't see your strength during yeah. that time. Yeah. No, so. it's super fascinating this. Yeah. <laughs> so moving into helping folks to to really work with you and and identify, you know, their individual qualities, let's give folks a little bit of snapshot. I know you kind of talked a little bit about the assessment. What what's it like for folks to work with you? Give us a little more on the strengths mastery program. What 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 are they getting into? Give us a scoop. Well, obviously it's great working with me. But... <laughs> <laughs> so... Basically, for anyone to work with me, and because the strength has made such a big difference to me, before you can do a six-month coaching program, where then you can go into all of the other stuff with the health coaching and the other bits of the positive psychology, for me, and like we're saying, this mindset, if you are so down, you know, you've really got your strengths nailed, and it's this big, it's it's a self-growth, self-development, deep dive into what you're good at and so for me that gives you this really strong foundation from which you can fly Mm -hmm. so that's where the strengths mastery comes in so it's a four-week program um and yeah we do one week we we do the um clifton strengths then another week we look at the values then we put them all together you kind of do these pairings and it's beautiful it's amazing to see how much these things all come together um and and then we look at how you then will leverage them going forward so it's yeah it's this journey of looking slightly looking back looking where you use them today and yeah it's just who who am I basically and how do I work best how will I be the most successful and as I said energized because I think that's a really important thing as well I think an easy way of looking into that, which I'm going to take you away from the strengths mastery, but just if you think when you're at school and you've got certain subjects that you don't enjoy and you're not good at and others that you do, if you even think about the energy that you feel, I don't know, let's say you don't like maths and you do like languages, just throw there as an example. The thought of going, okay, so how do you feel inside if you've got to go into the maths lesson? Like what's (laughs) your energy? I'm like, there better be a calculator somewhere because otherwise- my fingers and toes might not do it yeah I'm anxious (laughs) yeah and you and you're just down right whereas you've got to go into the language lesson or whatever it is Mm -hmm. yeah so so take that and think that instead of trying to get better at maths okay we need to bring the maths to a basic acceptable level that's for sure you're not just going to forget about that it needs to come up to a certain level But instead of putting all the energy on the maths, which I'm never going to be the most amazing person at, but I am really good at, let's just say, languages. If I really put a lot of my energy in there, because I feel great and interested when I'm doing it, that's where I'm going to excel. So this is why, like you said, we're doubling down on what works instead of trying to fix what doesn't. And as women, I mean, in general, but I think women are especially good at this, you know, this negativity bias, so much attention on what's not good and what what doesn't work. And yeah, I'm no good at that and I can't do this. 
so okay so what are you good at so there's a lot of reframing that we do within it I love the whole reframing you know is that really true um and and the reason that I do it as a four weeks it's quite intensive to do these four sessions is because just seeing your strengths is not going to work you do have to put a bit of time into it and so if we do it once a week for four weeks you're really bringing to the forefront of your mind over this period of time okay oh yes that went well and why did that went well why did that go well oh yes because I was using that aspect of my personality and so you you need to get this fixed in your brain it's like anything you read something and then you go off and you do something else because life is crazy and hectic and we've got 15 million other things to do. So by just being constant for these four weeks, it just really helps to get it in there. Yeah. You solidify it. And and I'm seeing this as like, if someone wants to launch a business, if someone wants to go out on a new career, if someone wants to, I see this as being foundational because I'm looking at it and going, if, if I had someone, like I said, you on my shoulder telling me all the things I'm good at, you know, giving me that, that extra resilience and reinforcement, I probably could have got a lot further faster yeah, this you this know? is my favorite kind of client at the moment, actually. And I have two beautiful examples that have just come up in the last couple of weeks. So one, she is, she does SEO, so search engine optimization uh, for women. And um, so like my nightmare. <laughs> right. <laughs> the, the, too. Like, and that she, you just said, oh, have you analyzed your data? I want to cry if you say that to <laughs> me. But I will pay you to it. But she's holding herself back. She's high in responsibility and learner. So the fact that she's got this really high learner means she never thinks she knows enough. Mm. So that's also an interesting one where we can go into strengths overuse as well, because at a certain point, we got to this point where it was like, I know so much and I have so much to offer. Like, yes, finally. And because she's so she's not that. Uh, high she was disappointed she wasn't high in communication skills and she said you know how am I going to get out there but we looked at what she brings she's for example very high in responsibility this woman is going to provide the best for her clients because she has this innate sense of needing to show up and needing to give her best so we went and she looked at everything because she was really disappointed when she'd seen her strengths at the big the first time she was like oh these are so boring and they're not but instead we just flipped it and I was so I often get strengths envy with my clients <laughs> like, oh wow that's an amazing <laughs> strengths profile mm -hmm. to have but it's fantastic to see how everybody ends up or you know generally we will find ourselves on the right path especially if you're starting a business later on you know not straight out of university when you're really likely more likely to be drawn to something that is the thing that energizes you and that you are really interested in so another of my clients she is launching a platform where she wants and she wants to also have a podcast and her combination of things she's got the communication but she also has the learner so she will take her learner and then spread that out to everybody using all of her communication skills so there with her because she, she was really thinking oh you know this is taking a long time to get off the ground and it's difficult by seeing these things that she had she's like oh my yeah I've got it <laughs> you know I say have you got what it takes well absolutely they're, they're all written down in black and white and then by going and seeing how these things have shown up in the past and how they've helped you have success you realize you can do it again Mm. yeah so I love this is a niche that I'm really enjoying doing because it's you know we want more women out there doing what yeah they're doing. absolutely absolutely and knowing like how they can team up with others who can yeah. you know even forge like a, a better cooperative relationship yeah. you know and and team up too right. now which brings me to back to you were doing worksite wellness support too and and worksite support Give folks a little bit of a background of just in case someone's listening right now and going like, huh, I think I can maybe use you for my team. What, how does it work to, to work with you in that aspect? Okay. So that's a really fun way of doing it as well. So there, what you do is each of the team members. So that's more done in like a kind of a workshop um, scenario. So everybody, each of the individual team members will go and do their own strengths assessments. 
So this is great. If you've got um, teams that are, you know, having communication problems, not performing so well, lacking in engagement, everyone does their own individual. We have a mini um, one-on-one coaching session with each person. So, because again, you do need to understand, you see these strengths written down, but you actually need to dig a little bit into it to understand how they really show up for you. And then we get together and you do, and you can and you can do it online, but you do a strengths grid. So you put together for everybody to see this, um, this grid, this table of everybody's strengths. So that really is fantastic at a team level because you can see where we're really strong as a group, as a team for all of the um, shared strengths. And also you celebrate the strengths that are not so common and so if you've got a certain project coming up you need certain talents certain abilities you can know who's got the strength that you can leverage for that mm. again it helps with communication because it, as we were saying before if someone's really high in yeah being the relationship building and someone else is higher in the analytical kind of skills you are going to need a different approach when you speak Mm -hmm. or or in the ways that you work and neither of them are wrong they're just different but once you know that then you can make it work and realize how much you need each other again I look at myself with my communication and you know includer activator all of these kind of things but for me if I team up with someone that's going to get into the details and make a plan then that's that's the way it's going to work best. Because you've got the whole spectrum of of capabilities. <laughs> now, of course, the question I have is, you've got daughters. Have you done this with them? I have. have done okay. the strengths? <laughs> this is an interesting one. So, yes, I actually, we've done the values one because, yes, obviously I was itching to find out what they had because when you start seeing these things, you just can't stop. So, yes, we've done it. Bit difficult to accept it from mommy. Um yeah. So, but I had an interesting one recently because I've actually just started doing some mini strengths program for girls. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it because I love working with adults because I feel there's, you know, there's a real exchange of, I, I love the conversation. This, I did these three strength sessions with a 12 year old. Oh my goodness. I cannot tell you how much I got from this. And the thought of getting to kids before they start making the mistakes and before they take or before they don't take opportunities because they don't think they're good enough or they're not capable if we can get into kids as well so we did these three sessions and um actually the last one was about her going off to a summer camp and she was really scared it was her first time going off for two weeks and my own daughter was going off to summer camp and I said you know someone else is actually paying me to do this with their daughters. Do you think maybe I might have something that I can help you with as well? And finally, my youngest was like, okay, right. So we looked again, what her is more, you do the values, but they look into themselves and the way that kids can actually bring things out. I found it, it was, it was really incredible. And so again, say, okay, well, you know, you're very helpful and you're very kind. So that will help you, when you're there and it's that you know how do I show up best what do I need help with how do I help others you know it's a more simplified approach so yes I'm working on it with my own daughters I, I <laughs> think, yeah I could see I could see definitely you know the the mom relationship there but at the same time I mean I think this is something fascinating for for moms and and parents to think about for their young daughters because Oh, beautiful. You know, like you said, before you you start basically getting in your own way, it's yeah, it's a absolutely, great way. absolutely. And I think especially girls, I just see I don't know women. I used to also teach. I'm um, living in Switzerland. I used to teach English. Do occasionally still, but it's always the women that come up to me and they're like, oh no, I'm no good and I can't do this. And they're always excellent, but they're lacking in this self belief. And so it's this like, but you can do it. And this is how. So it's not just, yeah, yeah, of course you can. You actually have the evidence and this is how. Yes. I like, I like the evidence. I think for a lot of people, if they can remember that, I mean, it's some of the things that I look at, you know, I had a, I had a teacher that was in grade school that highlighted my, my 
some of my strengths. And, you know, I, I've remembered that, you know, and it's stuck with me now. Have I always, <laughs> always, it's remembered, but have I always stuck with it? No, but, but at the same time, it, it let me say this, I, it's stuck with me, but I, I sometimes forget. So, but it's in the back of my mind. I think this kind of stuff could be incredibly helpful for teenagers. And, and, you know, as you're getting out of high school and preparing for college, I think this could be, or even just preparing for whatever you want to do in your career. I think this could be huge. So yeah, I think, yeah, it's so it's, it's so many different phases, and where if you need to pivot, if you've got a big change wanted or unwanted, it's just yeah. I mean, this term toolbox, I don't love it, but it actually kind of is. Yeah. And like you're saying, you don't remember. I'm a strengths coach. I have to have mine on my telephone. You know, because it's it is something that needs constant work. So it's not a magic recipe. You do need to keep going back and remembering. But when you've got it there. And okay, by now I joke that I don't remember mine. Of course I do, because it's what I'm doing. But I still do need to remember. But then when I have these things which seem difficult or bad days or time, bad times with my own kids, I mean, that even there, talking about relationships, teenage daughters is not, not easy. Again, when I actually, and okay, there you get so triggered. I don't always manage to do it. But when you go back to your strengths, and okay, who am I? And who am I at my best? And bring that in even to a family setting. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's just so many areas of life that it can help with. Oh my goodness. Lindsay, now we have so many ways. I love it. I love it. So let's tell folks your website, where they can find you on Instagram, all the things so that they can connect with you to learn more about what it's like to work with you. Amazing. Well, yeah, I'm on Instagram. Uh, my handle is Lindsay Guest and I'm on LinkedIn, same Lindsay Guest. Basically, if you put my name in, you can find it there. As I said, we to start with, we I just really want to go hard on these strengths because I think the the self-belief, the power, the way that you just feel so capable is is what's needed to make a big difference in this self-belief and that you can do. And those dreams that you've got and that thing that you really want to do but you don't quite think you can no you can and let's see exactly how so <laughs> Lindsay's gonna help you get there Lindsay thank you so much for coming on and sharing all about your strengths based training and so much more I really appreciate thank it you so much I have loved talking to you and what you do is absolutely just amazing so thank you thank you Hey, fellow health junkie, thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoy tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.